Plant vs. Zombies 2's Final World was released approximately six years ago. And as a game released ten years ago, that means it has been around for a long time. In fact, it's been around for over half a game's lifespan. Even longer if you consider pinata parties, which nearly exclusively use a Monday lore, which is even used during the tutorial. This world certainly has a history. After all, it's meant to represent the original game, and is by far the largest link between PvZ1 and PvZ2. It's the finale of PvZ2 as a game, combining every single world into one single massive challenge, featuring zombies from all the worlds, creating a 34 level marathon, longer than any other area, ending on a boss rush with different plans to fight each boss, and ending with the greatest reward imaginable. Huge major spoilers to the intense PZ2 lore right here, so skip forward to the timestamp shown if you don't know of this yet, but it gives you the legendary, and mighty, Taka with a waffle in it. It's a shame then, but this world sucks! On many levels! Modern Day is a good example of how finales can still fail, even if on paper, many elements should work totally fine. Yet, unfortunately, they simply do not. Even at release, people were pretty upset with this world. Plus, there is even evidence to suggest that this wasn't even the original intention for the game's finale, which is super interesting, but I'm getting ahead of myself. We shall cover Monday and see exactly what it does, and exactly what it does badly. After all, Monday is debatedly the most important world to get right, and in many ways, I really think it fails to make a good ending. Monday has a few unique traits that haven't really been seen since. Though that might be because there is no other worlds added since, because, again, finale. But Monday's main gimmick was that every world would be smushed into one. This has two notable effects. Firstly, being that zombies from other worlds will be available as part of a zombie pool, so you can have Octo Zombie side by side to a Glitter Zombie. This is the first time this was a thing outside of banana parties, which is important for self-explanatory reasons. I want to note, though, that this is so important and fun as a gimmick, that it's a common gimmick in mods for all worlds. Oftentimes, these are used semi-sparingly when this is a case, and often in a way to make the world's main zombies be stronger. Barrel zombies in a level can help counter threats that piano struggles with, for instance. There's a lot you can do here, and this gimmick is inherently pretty interesting. But to a lot of people, there's not a lot of reason to keep it so isolated. The other major thing is that occasionally world gimmicks get implemented. I do mean occasionally, though, and not all of them can be implemented properly. For example, minecarts and rails only appear once. Slayer tiles have a unique texture for Monday, yet only appear twice in the world. And some gimmicks simply do not exist, such as planks, Frostwind, Night, and so on. It's a serious issue overall, as it means some worlds get little representation in this grand finale. Then again, random Frostwind doesn't exactly sound like fun to just appear sometimes. Meh. The plans are interesting though. They all follow a new mechanic, Shadow Power. Moonflower produces 25 sun at base, but spreads Shadow Power in a 3x3 three three area. In this area, Shadow Plants receive a major change in functionality, usually a buff, that is generally desirable and interesting. These plants also buff Moonflower's sun production, as well as other Moonflowers, creating an interesting series of plants that really want to stick together. Monday also has a gimmick of its own, Portals. These spawn in and spawn a bunch of zombies from another world into a single space, while they push plants that were originally on that space. You can consider these Mon Day's ambush. These will always appear at the same spot, though. They even always spawn the same zombies, just sometimes in a different order. The exception is in Endless, where they use a separate set of zombies that is also guaranteed to appear. Portals aren't really RNG in the slightest, unless you're in Endless, and even then they aren't really too RNG. They are just designed to break the game in half as you get further down due to an oversight, but that's a discussion for another day. In addition, there are four new zombies added to this world. 
Newspaper Zombie, which has since been buffed from PvZ1 quite substantially. Balloon Zombie, which is no longer immune to most plants and instead acts like a bug zombie. All Star, which is football zombie from the first game, but instead of just moving faster than normal, they will instantly smash the first plant they come into contact with and move super fast. And Super Fan Imp. The best one, clearly. Now that we've got everything under the belt, let's move on. Starting with Mon Day's exclusive stuff and how come they work so poorly. Now I want to ignore the other world gimmicks this world has, and solely talk about the two exclusive Mon Day things the world brings, and the issues with them. By that, I mean both the zombies and the portals. Let's start with the zombies first, as I think these best explain the issues with the world mechanics as a whole. Out of the four zombies added, the only two with unique mechanics are All Star and Super Fanon. Now, I'm not saying that Newspaper and Balloon Zombie are necessarily poor additions. After all, Bug Zombie is amazing for Lost City, and Pharaoh is super important to Ancient Egypt. However, this is a big issue for the final world, where these similar zombies are also used. It makes the world's unique zombies feel way less important, where these are the very last zombies a player will have to fight. The two which are unique though are a little bit questionable. All Star is fine, but Super Fan Imp is a huge issue, because he's simply not very effective. Without All Star, it's a zombie that's often worse than a basic zombie, as you don't need to use resources to kill it in the early game, and its main ability won't do anything late game. All Star is the only way this can trigger, but there's basically no way to stop it from happening, due to All Star's high speed instantaneously as they appear. And usually, Super Phantoms are dead before it charges, which means that it usually only happens if they both spawn at the same time, but not in other cases. All Star alone is definitely better. It has a notable and dangerous effect that no other zombie has. However, I don't really like the instantaneousness of it. There's no real counterplay to it, beyond accepting a frontline will die, or fast reaction time with Puffer Stunions. Which, shockingly enough, I don't exactly appreciate. Though, at the very least, it's better than portals, I guess. Portals are consistent, but I don't think that really matters. Portals will spawn in 2-4 to four zombies, depending on the portal type, but this isn't really obvious for a variety of reasons. The random order of spawns, most notably. What's particularly troublesome, though, are the frequency. Portals don't appear when they could be most dangerous. They tend to just appear occasionally when the developers felt like it. The only level with the same portal used three times is Day 2, and only two other levels use the same portals two times. This might be down to using several types and considering that enough, but there are still several levels which only use one portal once. Mechanically, this also hurts the world because of zombies such as Jester. Jester isn't necessarily a bad pick for a portal, but the game doesn't do enough to ensure Jester feels like a fair fight. They are one, but the game doesn't explain the massive amount of weaknesses Jester actually has. And when every level can have a Jester, you need to prepare for a Jester, at fear of suddenly losing random levels. The thing is though, that otherwise portals don't do anything. If they can't spawn Jester, portals become so much easier to deal with. Their main ability is forcing a player to deal with a few zombies they may not be prepared for out of nowhere. With their complete consistency, low frequency, and otherwise poor usage, ensure this doesn't actually happen in a fair way. Monday also just can't use most of the other world's gimmicks, so it doesn't really feel like a true finale. And what's worse, the levels in Monday are genuinely so bad that you never get to see these gimmicks mix because Monday has the worst levels in the game, outright. The level design in Monday suffers from a wide variety of issues. Let's start with the most obvious, portals. You can never escape talking about them. How much do you run out of portals appearing? Well, I can tell you for a fact, you've probably seen them less than you think, because portals in fact, don't appear after day 21. 
in a world with 34 levels. You only see them for approximately two thirds of the world. And they are introduced day one. Hey, this is a uh, future creeps at like midnight. I just been editing away this video. I got to this part and I was actually like, you know, I don't actually know how many levels the Paul's actually in, so I decided to double check. Uh, fun fact, they literally show up in nine levels. I, I thought they only didn't appear in two thirds of the world when we were decently using the rest of it, and no, I just didn't double check. Uh, they literally show up in nine bloody levels in the entire game. It is remarkable how badly Portals was screwed up. I did not even know this, and I am making this amendment because it's just so stupid to me how badly they fucked it up. Uh, uh, back to your regularly scheduled creepsing. In fact, what should be the hardest part of the world literally has next to no portals, making it a lot easier than it should be. This is an issue because it makes the world's latter parts almost entirely fail, with little to nothing worth covering. These levels are all filler, don't use the world's mechanics, and fail in so many ways to be an actively engaging and interesting experience. In fact, the first half of the world is alright and serviceable, but the second half is absolutely not, feeling like the same level copy and pasted over and over, just with different zombies. It's a whole lot of nothing, which makes the whole experience feel extremely weak overall. I mean hell, just look at Bond Day 19 where the flag waves have about two zombies total, each, in a conveyor that gives you both primal beam and laser beam. And the flags themselves are decently spread out. This isn't a good sign whatsoever. This isn't held by the little variety being poor as well. Most of these levels are straight normal levels in the second half. In fact, the only notable gimmicks you have are two conveyors in 1925 to be ghouled on 22 and 27, and a don't trample flowers objective on day 30. Five. In an entire half of worlds. There are no major challenges alongside these levels that aren't just raw enemy spam, and in general, that results in a very uninteresting experience that isn't interesting whatsoever. Oh, and the bosses also suck. It's a free level boss rush, and while that does shake things up, it doesn't really work when there isn't a true final boss behind it. This especially hurts due to Planet vs Zombies 1, which I think everyone agrees had a far more dramatic and interesting final boss, with several plant specific interactions and in general just being a far more dramatic finale than anything in the sequel. To this day, this is debatedly one of the biggest missed opportunities, and I see specifically complained about fairly often to this day. In other news, it also sucks that this world is entirely easier than Big Way Beach. Like, legitimately, Modern Day is never in the conversation for the hardest world. Only Big Way Beach and Jurassic Marsh. So, in a vast majority of versions, you are encouraged to do Modern Day before Big Way Beach. Which wouldn't be so bad if you didn't have total control of your progression in those earlier versions. And I think this is an absolute issue. Admittedly, this is less so a level thing, but I feel that some of these levels could have been made a little harder to compete with the hellish gimmicks of both Jurassic Marsh and Big Wave Beach, which portals simply do not live up to. But this ain't all. You see, I am aware of the fan favoriteness, favoriteness, for the amount of people that like the next thing that I want to touch on, but I think it's a serious issue for World in spite of that. What a novel idea. I don't like something other people like. Well, that's also just incorrect. I actually like the next thing quite a bit. I just think it's used wrong. Okay, it's just Shadow Plants. I want to explain something. I don't hate Shadow Plants. I hate Shadow Plants in Bond Day. And I shall explain to you why. Firstly, concept. Shadow plants have a ton of unique mechanics, but why are they being placed in the very last world in PvZ2? It's an entirely new mechanic that, while interesting, maybe should have been introduced a bit earlier than Monday, 
especially considering it has little to do with modern day at all. I don't know what the modern day has to do with a bunch of plants entirely new to the franchise and based on an entirely different synergetic concept. I think this idea wasn't done great though either way. In reality, only three of the five shadow plants actually really work. Moonflower, Dusklobber, and Grimrose. Even here though, I don't think Dusklobber is doing all too good. For the opposite reason as the others. We shall cover this in a bit, but I think Shadow Shroom and Nightshade aren't exactly the best example of how this dynamic should work, as their shadow forms aren't exactly great. Let's start with Nightshade. You see, its powered form is debatedly worse than its non-powered form. It certainly does gain range, yes, but it also loses a lot of its damage in exchange. It can recover its leaves, but it loses out on a potential roll. For clarification, Nightshade's non-powered form can do a whole 200 damage per slap, and attacks fairly rapidly, which is a much more than the 100 damage its range attacks do. This limited range it has is pretty strong too, as it allows you to place it down early then stall with it. In this way, it can act as a fast recharge early game insta, which its powered form isn't nearly as strong at doing. It's also entirely a class by Dusklobber as an attacker, because Dusklobber classes basically anything. Dusklobber is an absolute monster of a plant, and a very real issue. It does just under PDPS in a 3x3 splash area for 150 sun. However, with Shadow Power, it gains the ability to hit the other two lanes adjacent to it. This, unfortunately, doesn't mean it can just hit those lanes with a single shot. It will hit those lanes with separate projectiles, all of which have a 3x3 splash radius. That's 30 damage per shot, and it becomes a 90 if the zombies overlap to the one in the middle lane, and this is in a 3x3 area. In other words, Dusk is the single strongest DPS plant in the entire game, dealing absurd amounts of damage in an incredible area that most plants can't dream of. It's one of the only plants that directly compete with Wintermelon, never a good sign. Meanwhile, Shadow Shroom is kinda bad. Its main strength is its plant food, which can clear out the entire screen. While it can't kill everything quickly, it can kill most zombies in the game quite reliably in the early game, in part due to some incredible stats it has, mostly in recharge. 10 seconds recharge is incredible, and is the main power of a plant outside its plant food. Its powered form, though, is not at all good. The issue is that Shadow Shroom's powered form allows a plant to spread its poison across zombies if they touch them. The issue is twofold. Firstly, being logistics. Shadow Shroom is a plant that needs to be eaten, and takes time to kill a zombie. The only source of power is a stun producer that powers plants only in a 3x3 area. See the issue? Furthermore, its ability to spread is incredibly niche, only showing in very specific scenarios that have to be manufactured, with Primal Pea Shooter and Shard Guard being incredibly gimmicky and rarely actually worth it. Shadow Shroom would work exactly the same with or without the shadow effect, and I have to wonder what the point of it being a shadow plant actually is. Mechanically, shadow plants are fairly flawed, which is funny because I'd say they have improved over time. As time went on, more shadow plants got added, which added more options, but admittedly most of these also don't necessarily work great. See Mercadamia Nut in particular. I think shadow plants needed more time in the oven, and I imagine they didn't quite have infinite time to work on them. Maybe shadow plants were planned before, but one day was simply the last time to add them. And they were happy enough with the concept to add them here? Hard to say, because I definitely don't know. Anyways, let's talk about the super old thing about Monday. You see, there's decent evidence to suggest that it wasn't originally meant to be the final world. Instead, something called Time Twister would be. Time Twister has an unused world icon seen here. It was hidden in the earlier versions, and maybe it was planned as part of those earlier versions. It has an icon too, as did the other worlds back then, and development seems to have been completely dead after Dark Ages happened entirely differently as planned. Pre 1.7 PZ2 is very weird. 
But hey, it's not entirely new today. You might recognize this icon as part of Penny's pursuit, which also brought something pretty interesting. A lawn. Was this lawn made for Penny's pursuit? Probably. But it's interesting to know that it straight up exists in some form. It definitely brings to mind a question. Was this part of the original plans of the world, or was it just made to this one mode? Hard to say, but I think it's interesting to note that the original plan seemed a lot more dramatic than the current world. By its very nature, Time Twister is a lot more intense than it just ending on a modern day. The whole time falling apart thing is fairly, you know, cool. But it's hard to say if Time Twister would have actually been better. You know, considering it literally doesn't exist. Finales are important. Without a good ending, an entire experience can fall apart. While PZ2's ending isn't exactly the worst I've ever played, it's not exactly a great ending. It's just more of the same. It doesn't make the experience feel better than it would be otherwise. It didn't add something to the game. But I guess it didn't really have to. Let's be real with ourselves, it doesn't match what Monday was. As a world, it was never truly the end. There was always something else to do. Where a floor or a feature, Monday isn't even really a finale of its own. It's a final world above being an ending. There's a reason the game still gets updated six years later. Monday existed because PvZ2 needed to end at some point, and after the previous worlds, it was the easiest way to end it. They had most of the assets already. It was meant to top off the game, act as a final world, in a game where it didn't matter which order the worlds were in. People would beat worlds in the order they chose, not the order they wanted. After all, a few updates later, they went through and added harder versions of old worlds, built around leveling and all that. Modern day wasn't meant as a finale. It was meant as a beginning. A beginning to the modern era of PvZ2.